Well, after that piece of Blue Peter from the past, I mentioned that next Monday we come right up to date with a special edition which is all about the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's warship, which is due to be raised from the seabed in a few weeks. That's at ten past five next Monday afternoon. On BBC One in just over five minutes, Animal Magic. But now it's time for John Craven's News Round. Threatened with closure, the first playground for handicapped children. Hello again. The first playground specially for handicapped children to be set up anywhere in the world could soon close. And the hundreds of children who love playing there will be left with nowhere else to go. The playground is in London and it's threatened because the land it's on is up for sale. Mary Downing now reports. The playground is part of a big rectory garden owned by the Church of England. When the idea of an adventure playground, especially for handicapped children, was thought up 12 years ago, the church offered this site absolutely free. But now the land and the rectory are up for sale, and there are fears that the person who wants to buy it won't want the playground to stay. A large piece of land like this right in the heart of London is these days very valuable, so the church says it must now sell. But the playground has become valuable too in a different kind of way to the hundreds of children who come here every week. Physically and mentally handicapped children of all ages, with the help of trained staff and able-bodied children, can spend all day at the playground. They make friends, paint, care for animals, and just play in a way that other children take for granted. I mean, all these children have nowhere else to go, really, and especially the local ones. And when we started, we never thought it would really be successful. Well, we hoped it would. We never thought it would be quite as successful as this. Children just spend their whole day here. They say it's their second home, sometimes even their home. The group who run the playground are now asking the church to sell the garden only to someone who will promise to let them stay on. From Poland, reports are coming in of big clashes between workers and police on the second birthday of the trade union Solidarity. The union represented Poland's workers but was banned last year when military rulers took over the running of the country. For days, the military rulers have been warning Poles not to take part in demonstrations supporting Solidarity. But despite their pleas, today's demonstrations show that many Polish people have not forgotten the union that struggled to get them more freedom. And that military rule in Poland is one of the causes of a row between American and European countries that she's normally friendly with. President Reagan wants to stop firms in England, France and West Germany helping Russia build a gas pipeline from Russia to Europe. Russia, whose rulers back the military government in Poland, will earn a great deal of money when the pipeline is completed. Stopping it is America's way of protesting about the harsh rule in Poland. But European governments, including Britain's, won't back America. Today, a Scottish engineering firm started loading pumps and turbines for the pipeline on board a Russian cargo ship. To the Scottish firm, selling expensive equipment like this is vital for their success. But they, along with other firms, now risk America cutting off trade with them. In India, thousands of people have been made homeless following some of the worst floods on record. And at least 66 people have died in the disaster. The state of Uttar Pradesh was hit hardest after the river Ganges overflowed. People fled their homes in whatever way they could. The lucky ones managed to find places on small wooden boats. Cattle, too, were stranded by the floodwaters. Valuable crops and houses were destroyed. Whole villages were cut off from the outside world. And marooned families have had to cope in the best way they can. Many have taken refuge in camps where all they can do is wait for the water to go down. Well, cricket and England have won the third and final, cor final Cornhill Test match against Pakistan and clinched the series by two matches to one. When play started this morning, England needed 29 runs with four wickets left. Admission was free at Headingley for the final few overs. After nine runs, it's Mudassa bowling to Botham. Out for four. 
Jubilation among Pakistan supporters, but it didn't last long. England scored steadily, and after 40 minutes, Bob Taylor needed a single for victory. A moment of triumph for Bob Willis, who hasn't lost a match as England's captain. And Imran Khan, the captain of Pakistan and brilliant all-rounder, was named the man of the match and the best player in the whole series. And finally tonight, police in Nottingham are appealing to tourists to help them track down vandals who set fire to one of Britain's most famous trees. It's the 500-year-old major oak in Sherwood Forest in which Robin Hood is thought to have sheltered. Maureen Carter reports. The major oak has stood in Sherwood Forest for five centuries and Robin Hood is said to have used it to hide from the Sheriff of Nottingham. The tree is 90 feet high and measures 33 feet around its trunk. The fire burned mainly in the tree's hollow interior, posing a big problem for firemen who had to put a ladder inside the trunk to tackle the blaze. There are so many cracks where fire could still be smouldering that the major oak will be monitored for the next few days. No one knows yet how the fire started, but police want to question two boys who were seen running away shortly before it broke out. The good news is that park rangers say the tree is still strong and healthy and could soldier on for another 200 years. Well, let's hope it does. That's all tonight. Bye for now. In just a minute, Johnny Morris, Terry Nutkins and Animal Magic. Tomorrow at 4.45, we are the champions. We are the champions! And the whites being chased by the reds. And here comes Joe Rollins. Dribbling well. And some of these boys, of course, have never played hockey before. David Rollins on the far side chasing. Richie Evans, the tall dark lad in the red. And on they go. There's the siren. Now, can they launch their boats? First team in, 50 more points. Fun and games as the teams battle it out in the semi-final of We Are The Champions tomorrow at 4.45. And now on BBC One, stand by for some more animal.